an 11 hour flight from Seattle to Beijing. To the midair brawl in first class. Come down here, they're taking some guy out of security. Missed up our good progress. It's almost time for dinner. It's Shreveport, Louisiana. The summertime grind is in full effect. Just normal days off. There ain't no racing going on. Ain't no events going on. It's just peaceful. A full on omelet? Oh, yeah, it's still fresh. But the day may just hold promise. Oh, it's your birthday today? And there's nothing like celebrating a birthday S3 Power Sports style. I already know they're going to try to pull some nonsense today. Some may even say it's a big day in a young man's life. Manny, come see DH. Manny, come see DH. How old are you? 33. Dang. With the scorching heat of the Louisiana summer keeping the masses from the mud parks. Hey, we rancheros. <laughs> Freeze up the guys for some equally important office activities. Get somebody in the shop to call him and place an order. And Dustin Jones has been quite busy. We came up here last night, took his cabinet off the wall, filled it completely full with packing peanuts. He's already really suspicious. He thinks something's going to happen today. With the plan set and the trap laid. Hey. Now it's just a waiting game. You got some time? This is Dustin. Hey, Dustin. Phil, how's it going? And how are you, sir? Good. Get a call from Phil Henderson, Can Am Marketing Department. Always going to these meetings with him with an open mind. The reason why I'm calling today, I mean, we are working with a ride park in China. That's exciting, man. Part of the deal is that Canon provides assistance with the, the designing of the course. They asked us if the S3 guys can, can participate in this new venture we have with this partner of ours. The summer may have just gotten a little more interesting. So essentially, we fly you guys out to China and have you guys help out during the design part of it. Yeah, uh, oh. that's a no-brainer. So, um, time frame, Phil? We wanted to knock it out in the next couple of weeks, so let's get the ball rolling and make this happen. Orchestrating a trip across the globe isn't an easy task, and the guys have zero time to waste. I can't believe what they just asked us to do. Mm -hmm. We gotta fill out visas, we gotta make sure our passports are up to date. Already filled out some of the visa paperwork for you. And the idea of traveling abroad seems simple enough. <laughs> they say Mandarin Chinese is literally the easiest language to learn. I'm looking at some of this writing right now, and I'm already starting to figure it out. First thing we're doing when we get there, go to an Akumite. I'm trying to find the black market. We need to find some nunchucks. We're going to watch a sumo match. Maybe we run into Van Damme. We're going to get into some big trouble. And we'll try. <laughs> Maybe we'll run into Kurt Russell there. Who knows? <laughs> Tango and Cash right there. With the China trip already coming together, the guys need to get refocused on the task at hand. I asked for customer sheets because they're in his cabinet. He wouldn't get them. Still hadn't done it. So now we gotta force that issue and get a plan together. So the plan is to shoot at him with the airsoft gun in hopes he will reach for his gun, which is in the cabinet. Whoa! But the question is, will he fall for it? <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> it was a good coffee cup. Oh, you thought because it was your birthday we couldn't get you? I can tell you, come November, I'm locking everything up. After much planning, the birthday prank is a success. Oh, that was a good one. Had to give to y'all on that. And now the day is complete. The fastest way to get from Shreveport to China involves five airports and basically two days of travel. We got a long flight here, bro. That's happening. And at this point, the only thing the guys know is that they're designing a desert racetrack for Can-Am. But getting to China may be harder than expected. Delta 129 is first. We're coming back. Um, was a rather serious incident up front. We do have uh, security on board. On the flight from Seattle to Beijing, a first-class passenger has a meltdown and has to be restrained. You can't make this stuff up. This is crazy. Fist fight on the plane. Missed up our good progress. It's almost time for dinner. Forcing the plane back to Seattle. Apparently it was a level three incident. A couple of the flight attendants didn't know what it meant. I don't know where, where we're going to go from here, but uh, this trip is already getting wild. Delta Flight 129 turned around. When a belligerent passenger stirred up turbulence. As he attempted to open the door mid-flight. The incident becomes national news. Passenger Dustin Jones. Or well, one of the flight attendants ran back. Dustin's account of the event gets picked up by all the major news outlets. They're taking some guy out of security. 
here. Beat and, and, and bound in a wheelchair. We're from the south. We're all pretty loud in where I'm from. So the first thing I did was put my shoes on. The flight is now on its way to Beijing, seven hours behind schedule. Be in Beijing, boys. Then finally, the guys make it to foreign soil. But of course, not without more issues. We just landed in China. We're trying to find our bags. These clothes are scattered around the conveyor. My good shorts. <laughs> There's some of my socks over there. Look at my suitcase blowed apart. Oh my God. How does that even happen? <laughs> some of the team find it more amusing than others. Sometimes you gotta send it when it comes to luggage. <laughs> You're gonna have to pack all your clothes in my bag. Let me see you here. Just how I brought it. We're at final destination, man. This is the first day of work, I guess. I just woke up, kind of catching up from jet lag. The guys meet up with the China BRP team that have been working on the project. Start to get to know everything that's going on, man. Get a game plan before we go out to the dunes. See that? Finish on the Chinese food. Yes. Pizza hot. You, you gotta eat that. <laughs> and first things first, tour guide Arthur wants to see what these guys are made of. Apparently we're going to this hot bowl restaurant. He keeps hyping it up like it's the hottest thing ever. I can't imagine it'll be that bad. There's no way this can go wrong. He just told us we can't take the camera in here. You gotta shut it down. A smorgasbord of everything and anything one could possibly consume. This is crazy. So why not try it all? I don't know what any of this is that's on my plate right now. Yeah, I was eating some different things. I ate some starfish, octopus, some other stuff I'm not really sure of. But really, there's only one question you can ask at this point. Yes, I'm full of regrets right now. I can tell by the way my stomach is bubbling. I can tell this two-hour drive is fixing to be bad. I don't feel good at all. <laughs> it's got me in line. It's got me squirming in my seat. And the drive isn't helping. <laughs> I knew when we started eating that food, it wasn't going to go good. After a few pit stops, We're joking to Dina Mongolia. The guy's heading to the Gobi Desert the future home of the Desert Dream Park. Oh my geez. That's <laughs> unbelievable. Which even still under construction is a sight to see. Got the sweetest stuff ever here. That Chevelle SS is bad to the bone. What about this big SWAT thing? <laughs> I don't know what that is, but it is bad to the bone. The pure magnitude of the Dream Park project is hard to comprehend. In the Dream Park, they have a very big project. Two kind of things. Like an indoor beach? Yes, indoor beach. Oh, my That goodness. is a plan. And the second thing is that during the winter, play the snow, ski, ski, yeah, ski, yeah. Between the hotels, aviation museum, air shows, concerts, racing, and off-road courses, the Dream Park will be an incredible getaway for anyone across the world. Uh, the president of this whole project is about to be here, and I think he's here with the governor, and so they're just walking in right now. The guys meet Mr. Wu, the visionary behind the Dream Park project. Yeah. How are you? Fortunately, he wants to take the guys for a ride. I'll throw some helmets on, man, and go cruise around and see what it looks like. The guys get a chance to look over the course area. More importantly, they ride some of the baddest dunes in the world. Man, these dunes out here are so crazy. They just go on and on. They're huge, tall. And then they have bowls like this one where you can hit 80 or 90 miles an hour running through it. Mr. Wu has 100 X3s getting delivered to the Dream Park, which will be there any day now. It's going to give people a true experience on a Can-Am that they wouldn't otherwise get to, get to experience. So the guys need to get moving on designing the course. I was looking today on like some cool downhill like step down. Actually, I want to do the over-under jump right here. The track needs to be finished within five days. But I think right here, kind of make it a little tabletop jump almost. So the guys need to present their ideas to Mr. Wu before breaking ground. You go at what looks like a wall where you can't see, and then you ramp out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to set out your do so. You, you, you can have many of this really? if you want. Yes. I know the horror. Man, the track is going to be wild. It's going to have some crazy features. It's going to be way over the top. But they just need to make sure they can deliver. Man, it's a little overwhelming right now, buddy. I'm going to go see if what we've sketched so far even will work. Uh, plus, we've got to get it underway, or there's no way we'll get it done in time. But you can tell how important it was to him that it's got to be great, man. Plus, I don't want to get buried in the middle of the dunes in China. I feel like they can do that. Yeah. I'm going to say there's a good possibility if it don't turn out right, we're going to come up missing. With time ticking away, 
guys who have roughly 200 acres of prime desert to make the baddest track possible. Right now we're flagging off the sand highway. It goes all the way around the entire property. To utilize as much real estate as possible, the guys decided to make two courses, one that's more technical and one that's built for speed. They need to know that this is for beginner riders, so it has to be easy, fast, and fun. Come to, to get the courses done, they're going to have to move quick. Okay, so they're going to follow us, so they're going to make it. Right when we start working the freaking wind, just keep looking at it coming off the top of that dune. The guys have 12 bulldozers at their disposal, so in theory, they should be able to make quick work of the sand highway. We're finally breaking ground, and they're burning some coal now. They got all the equipment out here running. I already want to be in the next three ripping, man. With things running smooth on the course, Dustin can't help but to wonder what's happening back at the shop. Now that we've been gone for several days, they probably started getting loosened up at the shop. There ain't no telling what they got going on over there. And surely, it's business as usual. Matty! This freaking dude, Ed. What are you doing? I'm boxing up action boxes. What's the deal with that white piece of junk outside? That's not a piece of junk. That's my $500 car things, and it's sweet. While the guys are in China, Manny has made an investment. It's got coil over shocks. It's not piece of junk. Is it ride good? Bro, they run. It's set to kill. Let's go ride it. All you gotta do is say go, we'll go. We got like five minutes. There's nobody up front but me. All right. Let's go. Clearly, the guys have time for this. I'm about to grab this bullet. What's this little pedal up here? That's the emergency brake. <laughs> <laughs> Ride or die. And first thing, Logan wants to go big. Red Rider, help! <laughs> but naturally, Manny thinks he can do better. Oh, oh Manny, 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 Manny! Manny! <laughs> Manny! Too close. Well, at least they're having fun at work. Back in China, guys have been pushing to get the course done. This is this is not going to turn out good. I just call them both and tell them what's going on. But they've reached an impasse. We've got to bury three containers. It's not just a little test ride track. He wants the best track in the country. Dustin is a little overwhelmed. We'll do everything we can, but I wanted to make you aware. Ultimately, we want to give them the best product that we can. And trying to build the track in three days is not how we give a world-class track. Dustin doesn't think they can finish the track before they leave. A couple of things that we wonder about is like burying the container here and then the bridge entrance here. Do we worry about that right now? Do you know what I mean? Mm. Tell them that's good. The guys catch a break. Tell them the track is really, it flows good. But yeah, tell them that's perfect. That's what we wanted to hear. Not having to build additional structures, they are free to focus on getting the course done before they fly home. Thank you. Which is good, because Mr. Wu's 100X drivers have just arrived. And they need a track to race on. Dude, I've never seen you experience nothing like that. How about that welcome? These young men come from all over China to learn to drive and then race the Can-Am Maverick X3. This is the vehicle that we race for all the big off-road races. Uh, and they're eager to learn. These guys are really fresh to drive. Some of them, it'll be their first opportunity to actually ever sit in an X3. So, man, to be a part of this, man, it's really exciting. Uh, you said, well, they got the 100 units and they got 100 drivers. I asked him if we can throw down a donut right here. Oh, you want it? Yes, right here. It would be tricky to actually speculate what was said in the exchange. But in Chinese, that's a big fat yes. How sweet was that part job? The evening is a celebration of sorts, full of the rich inner Mongolian culture that's mixed with the all-around excitement for a desert ride that's just days away. It's the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. I don't know how to explain it. Their traditions are crazy, man. You gotta respect it. Truly a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Guys unknowingly became involved in the Dream Park project, but now they start to understand what it actually means for Mr. Wu, Can Am, and for S3 Power Sports. But with all that being said, they've still got work to do. Building some burns. 
some heavy equipment. A lot of uh, hand gestures and a real primitive grunt. Seems to be working so far. Guys hustle to get both courses done, which can't come soon enough. The Dream Park's 100X3s just showed up. They're all scrambling around trying to get them unloaded. I assume they got to be ready tomorrow for the big ride. And to say that the ride is important would be an understatement. Oh my god. It keeps getting wilder and wilder here. And the guys are smack dab in the middle of it all. Thank you very much. Good. Uh, they're fixing to do a parade of vehicles, and so right now they got a hundred brand spanking new Jeep Rubicons lined up. How about cool? No, this dude's out here sweating with an umbrella, calling shots, dude, like organizing this thing. Look at him, look at him, look at him, finna karate kick that camera down. Get it out of here. The parade of vehicles kicks off a weekend full of concerts, MMA, and dune riding. For the guys, it's quite an experience. Hundreds of brand new cars, and then it starts like an off-road club. We're just along for the ride right now. If the guys have any chance to finish the course, they need to get back to the desert. Well, the parade's over. That's a wrap, baby. Parade's done. Now we go back to work. Oh. Oh. We're getting close. It's almost done. Oh. I guarantee you, we're, we're knocking on the head. Thousand miles driven on the ground. I can feel it because my shoulders are sore. Guys are painfully close to being able to test drive the course. A lot of work. Building tracks ain't easy and it ain't fun, but it's about to be sweet. And now it's time to reap the benefits. Dave, you realize we're fixing to race on our own track? Hit him with a yee yee. The guys have spent five long days in the Gobi Desert waiting for this moment. Go! And the course doesn't disappoint. The track that we built is probably the, one of the funnest tracks I've ever been on. We integrated some really cool features. Man, I think I'm most excited about getting a rip on this thing because we just laid it out like we were on a ride. A couple of little step ups, some step downs, a little ski jump. We put some over-unders in there. We put some really cool berms, some tall berms, and then some big tabletops that you can hit just wide open. It's a really fun, fast track. Throw down the grip, or if you want to just cruise around and learn how to drive these things, it's, it's good for that as well. It's for all skill levels of riders, for sure. The track is a success. I have no doubt we didn't disappoint with that one. That bad boy's fun. And the guys barely finished in time for the weekend ride. Dude, China is mind-blowing. It's a great experience, but going into it, there's no way we could have known what we were stepping into, the magnitude of the project we were going into. And with that, it's time to head back home. I feel blessed and, and very privileged to be an ambassador for k am for S3, and for the off-road community. That has to be the most singly purchased k ams ever. It's kind of fitting for everything Chinese over here. It's all lined up, perfect, nice, neat to work. They're still uncrating them, too. This ain't all of them. I'm blown away by the whole experience. We were their special guests, man, and they treated us that way. It was a, a wonderful trip, and uh, now we're ready to go home. So. That's k am right there, boy. That's what I'm trying to be about. On the next episode of Visions of Victory. Friday before Vegas Arena. Thousand things going on. We got a long work day ahead of us. This is my new haul. Trying to join a new club or what? You get over 100 miles a gallon on this thing. There's always something around here. Me and Vegas Arena is right around the corner. Mr. Mal's going to be sitting in a brand new Maverick X3 van. That thing is sweet. Finders keepers. <laughs> Not that bad. I'm gonna go for the neck. Try some chicken neck. I'm gonna be honest with you, it's not that bad. <laughs> right, Delicacy man. is the beak. Let's get some chicken tongue. That is what I really heard. Found it. Don't waste that. A bit of chicken tongue. It's chicken tongue, it's the delicacy, remember? Making room for dessert. <laughs> Dude, you ate the whole fully. <laughs> oh, there's a bone in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Get the other half of this uh, crown. That's good. That's good meat to me. That's what I call sweet meat. <laughs> <laughs>